Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Seth. Every time you turn around, the taps are multiplying at your local bar. What was once two or three beers on tap is now 10 or 15. And these new beers often come from smaller, more creative breweries. Join us as we explore the raging craft beer revolution and discover all there is to know about beer from the brewery to your pint glass, including the brewers, the drinkers, and everyone else that makes this a beer nation. In order to fully explore the craft beer renaissance, we first have to understand what makes craft beer craft. You know, the definition of craft beer is more controversial than you think. Some people believe that it's the size of the brewery that determines whether it's craft beer. Other people believe it's just the quality of the beer. We're here at our favorite after work spot, Rattle and Hum in Manhattan, to see what Patrick, the owner, thinks about it. Hey, hey Patrick, hey, what's Patrick, up, man? How are you? How's everything? Welcome. All right. Feeling so thirsty. I think I'm gonna go with the Dogfish Head 60 Minute. I'll have the uh, Fresh Chester Pale Ale from Kevin Lawrence. How many taps do you have? 40. Here? Four casks. My thought of, of craft breweries is small, like small, because they pay so much attention to each and every batch they make, and it's incredible the amount of attention they spend on it. But in a few years, you're gonna notice that these little guys are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Business, that's the way things are going. But I don't think these guys, the craft beer guys, Stone, Captain Lawrence, um, Six Point, they're not gonna forget where they came from. They're not gonna forget anything. They're gonna make sure the quality of their beer is superb at all times. That's what this bar is kind of more of all about. The reason we don't do Bud, Bud Light on Tap is because we're bringing so much to the table where we don't need anything like that. Budweiser guy said I was the worst business person he's ever talked to. I told him to get out and never darken the door again. <laughs> <laughs> so they thought they were coming back in two weeks ago when we were doing the uh, Budweiser comparison week, but he didn't realize we were actually taking the piss out of Budweiser by giving away free Budweiser. <laughs> It's great when you get in Budweiser drinkers. Can I get a pint of Budweiser, please? I'm like, no, sorry, wrong bar. That's where you see it. There's more explanations in this place than I've ever seen. Right. It's yeah. just to get people over the craft beers. I didn't even want Guinness on tap. Come on, I know no, it's weird for an blood. Irish guy to say that, but to me, it's not really home blood. It's English owned. It's, okay. right. it's not a, really a craft brewery. So you don't think Guinness is craft beer? What's your definition of craft beer? It's a lot smaller than Guinness. Okay. okay. To me, craft beer, I think I got a funny version on it. It's kind of McDonald's to a nice restaurant. So how about Sierra Nevada? Do you consider that to be a craft brewery? If they're making over 15,000 barrels a year, then they're not really a microbrewery. But yeah. they still be craft beer, because it's still the intention, I think. Uh, Budweiser can come out with a beer any, any day. It'll taste great. And good luck to them if they can, but you just won't see it in this bar. If we were gonna ask this to anybody else, is there somewhere around here that would know the answer to this question? I would take it up to Pleasantville. Yeah? Yeah. Captain Lawrence out there, Scott Flacaro, in my opinion, is one of the best breweries. We're just a few steps away from Rattle and Hum in front of Grand Central Station, which has a train that'll take us right up to the Captain Lawrence Brewery. If anybody understands the craft beer controversy best, it's Scott Picaro from Captain Lawrence. Before he opened his own brewery, he worked for Sierra Nevada, one of America's largest breweries. Now, the Brewers Association defines a craft brewery as a brewery that's small, independent, and traditional. And as Patrick from Rattle and Hum tells us, Captain Lawrence fits that bill perfectly. So since it's raining, let's go get it. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Scott, how are you doing? What's happening? How are you? So, uh, so this is a great place you got here. How long have you been around? Uh, it's been uh, three years, eight months, and uh, 22 days. Oh, wow. That's pretty exact. Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting ride so far. How did you get into brewing? I uh, stumbled upon it in high school, 17 years old. I uh, went over to my friend's house one day after school. His dad was making beer on the stove. I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I was actually, my freshman year, I was at Villanova studying to be an accountant, following my father's footsteps. Right. And I came across UC Davis in my, one of my brewing magazines. I said, holy shit, you, know, you, can, you can do this? You can get a college degree in brewing, and so off to Davis I went, yeah, fermentation science is what my degree reads. So being in California, did you stay over there for a while? Did you just come right back? I was out there for six years. Uh, four years of school and two years working at Sierra Nevada. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, making beer there. It's a beautiful place. What did you do for Sierra Nevada? I was a brewer. They had, um, I mean, it's 24-7 there. So I was a shift brewer, meaning, you know, I was there for eight hours making beer. Somebody came in for eight hours after you just around sure. the clock and went, you know. So six or seven years ago, I mean, Sierra Nevada was still in a period of growth. Uh, could you feel that when you were there? Or? The place is huge. I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you how much they were growing, but I could tell you we were making a ton of beer. Right. So it was fun. It was a cool place to be. Why did you decide to come back uh, here? The people, you know, I came home with family and friends really more than anything. 
kind of came to the realization that if I was going to stay in you know Westchester or this area, I was going to have to open up my own brewery. And uh, it took about a year and a half to you know put the business plan together, get the funding and loans and all that. And sure. Here we are. So Scott, I'd love to take a look at the actual brewery. Would you mind showing me around? No, absolutely. Let's go take a tour. Well, I'm going to stay here and have some liquid gold because I see that it's on tap. Excellent. Nice. 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 All right, let's go. So Scott, how much beer do you produce each year? Uh, we uh, will do about 5,000 barrels this year. Uh, we started off with 800 and uh, worked our way up to 1,600, then 2,200, and now will be around five. That's amazing growth. It's been uh, it's been pretty quick, um, but you know, again, we're in the New York metro, so there's a lot of people here to drink beer. Now, one of the elements of, uh, of being called a craft brewery to the Brewers Association is that you need to produce less than two million barrels a year. Yes. You're well below that. That makes you, uh, you know, a quintessential craft brewer, would you say? Yeah, I mean, we're we're small. We are a micro craft brewer, I guess you could say. I mean, craft uh, to me, I guess the the way you go about making the beer, the ingredients that you use, the uh, the philosophy behind it. You know, we're not out here to make the lightest lowest calorie, driest, most flavorless beer out there. We're trying to make the complete opposite of that. I wouldn't be in this business if I didn't like beer and I wouldn't be making beers that I don't like to drink because that's no fun. Sounds like you uh, you think that you know, being a craft brewery um, is based on the quality of brew as opposed to the size of the brewery. Oh, absolutely. We could throw away all the beer that we're making now and start making, uh, you know, Captain Lawrence Lime. And okay. uh, I, don't, I wouldn't consider that a craft brew beer. It's, yeah, it's the quality of the beer, not the size. You know, one of the things that you seem to feature are you bottle a lot of um, uh, barrel-aged beers. Um, how did you come up with that idea? For whatever reason, even when I was younger, I always had a, a, a fascination with oak barrels. I, I don't know what it is, even before I made beer. And then when I was a home brewer, I always wanted to age in oak barrels, but it's not easy to find little oak barrels. And then finally when we got to this size, I was like, all right, now I make enough beer where I can fill a whole barrel. Away we go. And we're very fortunate to have a winery next door. There's not too many places in the New York metro that have a winery right next door. Right. That's pretty serendipitous. Yeah, we got lucky. Well, you know what? That sounds so delicious, and I'm beginning to get a bit jealous of Seth, who's sitting at the bar right now. Uh, you mind if we go in and have some samples? No, no, let's go get some beers. Great, let's go. Nice. Captain Lawrence opens up its doors to the public on Friday and Saturdays for tastings. And as you can tell, it's a popular event. Now, Seth, Scott seems to think that a beer becomes a craft beer based on its quality, as opposed to the brewery's size. I would have to agree. You know it when you taste it. Cheers. And that's craft beer. Dude, take your amorous shit elsewhere. It's the E True Hollywood story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just ask you. You gotta get this guy on. You gotta get this we guy on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry I said that. Thank you, yeah. I bought this the other day. No, it's just $10. It's garbage. I, no, I'd rather not because I don't have an undershirt. Is there another question? Let's do it one more time. Just recover it. That was good. I don't have an undershirt.